Okay, so we're going to take a look at 7.6 geometric series, much like arithmetic series, but obviously it has a geometric pattern. Now the difference between series and sequences again, sequences are a series of numbers, a uh, sequence of numbers, sorry, that is uh, split by having commas in between all of them. A series are also numbers that follow a pattern, except they are being separated by addition or subtraction. And this is the formula to figure out the sum of the first however many terms in a geometric series, okay? It says r cannot be one because that would make the bottom of this one minus one, which is zero. So we don't have to worry too much about this. It's just that r cannot equal one. It also makes sense that the um, r, the ratio cannot be one because in order to get to the next number, that's the ratio. If we, r was one, that means we'd be multiplying by one to get to the next number, which wouldn't change the number. So it wouldn't be geometric. Anyways, example one says find Sn for the series 2 plus 8 plus 32 plus so forth when n is 8. So I wrote down here already that a, the first number, is 2, r, the common ratio, is 4, and n, the amount of terms I'm going to add together, are the first 8 terms. So I'm going to do the series for the first 8 terms here. This is the series formula for a geometric pattern. Obviously, this is geometric because the common ratio is 4. In order to get to the next number, you are multiplying by 4. It wouldn't be arithmetic because 2 plus 6 is 8, but if you add 6 again, it's not 32. It's multiplication, clearly. So when I substitute these values into this formula, I end up with this. Sum of the first 8 terms is equal to 2 times the r is 4 to the power of n, which is 8 minus 1, all over r, which is 4, minus 1. Okay, so sum of the first eight terms is going to be equal to 2, and obviously you can take out a calculator and you can figure out what this value is in here, and you can continue this problem on your own. So this is a straightforward problem. Obviously you figure out the brackets first, 4 to the power of 8, and then you subtract the 1, then you multiply by 2, divide by 3. And that will give you the sum of the first eight terms. Now, keep in mind that the sum of the first eight terms should not be a decimal. So if you end up with a decimal there, obviously you've done something wrong. It's got to be a whole number because these are all whole numbers being added together. The other thing would be that you have to find the sum of the first eight terms just as if you were finding the sum of the first 800 terms. You would not carry out this pattern so that you have eight terms in front of you and then add them together using a calculator. That would not be the correct way of doing this. This is the correct way of doing this because we are gonna do some of the first eight terms just as if we were doing some of the first 800 terms. And clearly we would not be carrying this pattern out 800 times and then adding that together. So that's how you would get your marks on your test. So example two, Find the sum of the first nine terms for the series 3, negative 9, 27, and so forth. Remember, sum of the first nine terms is a lot different okay, than term number nine. Term number nine is just the term, the ninth term alone. S9, or sum of the first nine terms, would be if you actually labeled or had nine terms in front of you and you added them together, that's what you would get. So if we take a look at this one here, the a value, or the first term, would be 3. The common ratio, there's clearly a common ratio of negative 3. You are multiplying by negative 3 to get to the next number, okay? You are not uh, adding to get to the next number. You're multiplying by negative 3. That times negative 3 is negative 9, times negative 3, positive 27, and so forth. Clearly, every second number is a negative, um, and every second number is a, is a uh, positive as well. The common ratio, again, always be careful, is negative 3. And then it says find the sum of the first 9 terms, so n is equal to 9. So we're going to write this formula down. Write that down. It's going to be Sn is equal to a times r to the n, and then minus 1 all over r minus 1. 
If we plug all of our values in there, we're going to sum of the first nine terms is equal to 3 times. And this is negative 3 all to the 9, sum of the 9 terms, minus 1, all over r, which is negative 3, minus 1. Continuing this, sum of the first nine terms is going to give us, um, we'll do 3, and then negative 3 to the power of 9 is negative 19,683, and then subtract 1, all over, and then you have three mi negative 3 minus another 1 is negative 4. So sum of the first nine terms is going to be equal to 3 times negative 19,600, and when we subtract another 1 is 84, all over negative 4. And so I can continue this in one shot. I'll do 3 times negative 19,684, divided by negative 4, and I get 14,763. So I carried that one out for you. And again, it's very important that you notice that it was a whole number, because there were no decimal numbers here. So when you add them together, clearly, if you're adding all whole numbers together, you're going to end up with a whole number. Okay? So that's a straightforward, the first two questions there. One has a positive ratio, one has a negative ratio. Example 3 says, find the sum of the series 4 plus 12 plus 36 plus dot 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 plus 2916. We had a problem similar to this with the arithmetic uh, series. And in order to add all these things up, obviously you would have to use the SN formula. So if we have SN is equal to A times R to the N minus 1 all over R minus 1. Again, why would I use this formula? to find the sum of the first however many terms, because I notice that the first number is four, okay? That I do know. But then there is no common difference, there is a common ratio. In order to get to the next term, you're always multiplying by three. So there is not a common difference, there's a common ratio of three, and that's why I've chosen to go with the geometric series formula. So looking at this, then, the only other thing that we don't know is what our n value is. What is our n value? How many terms are there? Well, we don't know how many terms there are, but we do know that the series starts 4, 12, 36. There's a bunch of numbers in between, and then there's 2,916 at the end. This is the last term, term n. We don't know what term number that is. If we did, if we knew this was term 10, then no problem, we can plug in 10 for n. But all we know is what term one is, we know term two, and we know term three, and then this is term n. So we do know that that's the last term, but we don't know what term number that is. In order to figure that out, I'm gonna have to use the uh, term number formula for, remember this is geometric, so geometric term formula is Tn is equal to A times R to the n minus one. Now, we know what A is. A is 4. So A is 4. R, the common ratio, is 3, as discussed. And we know what Tn is. The last term is 2,916. So we end up with this formula. What term number is 2,916? That's what we're looking for, the N. So if I go to solve for N now, the first thing I'll do is divide out the 4 from both sides because I'm trying to isolate for n. And so that'll get rid of this. So I'll get 3 to the power of n minus 1 is equal to 729 when I do that division. Now there's two options here. You've seen this before and you can use logs because the thing we're looking for is an exponent. So you can use logs, take the log of both sides and use that exponent rule for logs, you know, to get rid of the exponent. That is very easy to do and you know how to do that. Otherwise, um, what I notice here is that n has to be a whole number. I know this. This is not going to be a decimal number because there's no such thing as term number 2.68. It's either term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, term 6, or term 7, or whatever it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to my benefit because since I know that this is going to be a whole number, I can either guess and check or I can do the following. 
What I'm going to do, this is a base 3 already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 200, sorry, 729 as 3 to the power of something. So I know 729 has to also be 3 to the power of something since it's a whole number. So if I do that, I try 3 to the power of, you know, 2. Obviously not big enough, it's 9. 3 to the power of 3 is 81. 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 5. If you did 3 to the power of 6, that actually gives you 729. So instead of writing 729, you could write 3 to the power of 6. What that tells us is that if these two sides are identical, because that's what equals means, if 3 to the power of 6 is equal to 3 to the power of this, then that means these two sides are exactly the same. If the bases are both 3, if the bases are the same, that means the exponents also have to be the same. So I know that 6 has to be equal to n minus 1. If the bases are exactly the same, that means the exponents have to be exactly the same. So since both bases are already 3, the 6 has to be equal to n minus 1. And if I solve for n, I get n is equal to 6 plus 1. Bring that over. And so n is equal to 7. So I get n is equal to 7. So now I know when I go to find the sum of all these numbers here, that n, there are only seven terms in there. This is the proper way to figure out how many terms there are. You would not get any marks for carrying this pattern out until you got to the number 2916 and then figuring out how many terms there are. You know, that's besides the point. That how about if there were 700 terms? You'd be there for a very long time. So. Now that we have this, now we can plug these numbers into this formula to figure out the sum of the first seven terms. There are only seven terms there. So sum of the first seven terms are going to be equal to a, which is 4. Then you got r, which is 3, to the power of 7, minus 1, all over r, which is 3, minus 1. And obviously, I didn't do this one for you, but you can do this one yourself. On the bottom, you're going to get 2. You're going to have to figure out what 3 to the power of 7 is, and then subtract 1 from it. You multiply that by 4, divide by 2, and then you'll get the sum of the first 7 terms. Clearly it has to be a whole number, because if it is a decimal number it doesn't make sense, especially when you're adding all whole numbers together, you got to end up with a whole number. Okay, So that's how you would come up with this. So again, finding how many terms there are in that series using the term number formula for a geometric pattern. And then, now that we have that the first term is 4, the common ratio is 3, and that there are only 7 numbers in that series, we can plug that into the geometric series formula and figure out what the sum of the first 7 terms are. And also, just like in the arithmetic series, you got to remember that this could be a word problem. Again, I'll bring it back to a movie theater. They could be saying that the first row of the movie theater has four seats, the second row has 12 seats, the third row has 36 seats, and the final row, or the last row, has 2,916 seats. And they may ask you to figure out how many seats there are in total in the all of the rows. And that's what we just did. We found out the total of all these numbers in the first seven, there's only seven terms. So just uh, make sure that every time you are doing a word problem, you're setting up either a series or a sequence with the numbers, the values that they give you, and then you answer the question appropriately. If it's asking you just for how many seats there are in just in the seventh row, you are finding term seven. But if they want all seven rows together, you're finding the sum of the first seven rows.